COVID is just nature's way of dealing with old people. It has been an explosive week in the UK's COVID inquiry. We heard 10 witnesses talk over 28 hours. And while we did learn a lot, including that Dominic Cummings seems to enjoy nothing more than a good old swear. To come back to Helen's bullshit. She's f***ing up Frosty. She's f***ing up me and Case. And that c These were the key takeaways. First of all, there seemed to be a general distrust of anything said by then Health Secretary Matt Hancock. You, you make the point that the Cabinet was told, in your words, time and time again by the Health Secretary that we had plans in place. Had you assumed that when he said that, he knew what he was talking about? I assumed he'd seen them and been through them and thought they were adequate. I thought that's what he was saying. But I would not understand a scenario where these plans did exist and yet we never got them. Your belief was that you were being misled by Mr Hancock, misled by the DHSC. Yes, multiple officials, including Mr Shinner uh, and uh, an excellent uh, private secretary, Alexandra Burns, raised issues with me that they thought that um, what was being said in the morning meetings about those issues was not accurate. You say that Mr Hancock is unfit for this job, the incompetence, the constant lies, the obsession with the media bullshit over doing his job. Still no fucking serious testing in care homes. <laughs> his uselessness is still killing God knows how many. There's no way the guy can stay. He's lied his way through this and killed people and dozens and dozens of people have seen it. The Cabinet Secretary said to me himself, the British system does not work if ministers lie. Uh, and it followed uh, a media interview I had done uh, at the end of January where I uh, said straight that there could well be cases in the country, which of course there were about 10 days later, uh, and that we were unclear about, uh, but were prepared to consider that asymptomatic um, uh, uh, infection could occur, very unclear about transmission at that point. But I felt it was the truth. I was telling the truth. The way that was uh, handled was that I was advised not to do any further media uh, and that the Secretary of State would need to clear all media. No, I did meet the Secretary of State on that day and he did make his displeasure clear. There's a particular point you make, which we can see in this paragraph on the screen, Lord Stevens, which is that when the as we know they were in the early stage. The COBRA meetings were chaired um, by Matt Hancock. Other Secretaries of State sometimes avoided attending. I'm not saying that was cause and effect, but that is the, that is the fact of the matter. Well, I'm sorry, it, the, the inference in your statement is that it was cause and effect, but you're, you're not going that far. Well, I, I just observed that those two coincided. The inquiry has heard evidence that other people working with Mr Hancock found him someone uh, who was untruthful. Uh, was he someone you found you personally could trust? Yes, for the most part, yes. What do you mean by for the most part, Lord Stevens? Well, as I think I said right at the start, I I'm not denying that there were a small handful of occasions during the course of the year, year and a half, uh, when there were tensions. Um, but that, I don't think, is particularly surprising given the circumstances under which everybody was working. We also learned that before the COVID inquiry was announced publicly, Boris Johnson's private secretary decided to enable auto-deleting messages on a WhatsApp group in which Johnson and his closest advisers discussed key COVID policies. Why did you turn on the disappearing message function around the time that the Prime Minister announced a public inquiry into the COVID pandemic? I cannot. I mean, I can, I can guess or I can speculate, but I, I cannot uh, recall exactly why I did so. Uh, so I don't believe it was intended to prevent the inquiry from having sight of this. It could, for example, have been because I was worried of someone screenshotting or using some of the exchanges and leaking them. Well, these are your closest colleagues, and you had obviously been engaging with them in this WhatsApp group for many, many months. In fact, from 16th of November 2020 until April 21, you just turned on the disappearing function. Uh, correct. But I didn't, I mean, I, again, I mean, I think I, I, I see what you're pushing at, but I didn't put disappearing function on any of your, my other WhatsApps. And, it, you know, I, the, the rationale for doing this is unclear to me, and I cannot remember that far out. But as I say, the PM Updates WhatsApp group uh, was based on a formal sort of flow of paperwork. And so arguably, the, all of that material is still available to the inquiry. 
this WhatsApp group is not available because the disappearing function was turned on by you in April 2021. Correct. We heard that Number 10 and the Cabinet Office were mired by a toxic macho culture where the rules that they were doling out to the public were very rarely being followed by themselves. It was definitely a toxic culture. Uh, it wasn't a pleasant place to work. The inquiry saw yesterday some particularly crude WhatsApp exchanges between Dominic Cummings and Boris Johnson about you. If I have to come back to Helen's bullshit PET, designed to waste huge amounts of my time so I can't spend it on other stuff, I'll personally handcuff her and escort her from the building. I don't care how it's done, but that woman must be out of our hair. We cannot keep dealing with this horrific meltdown of the British state while dodging stilettos from that Was Dominic Cummings part of that toxic culture? You know, it's not, it's horrible to read, but it is both surprising and not surprising to me, and I don't know which is worse. It's disappointing to me that the Prime Minister didn't pick him up on the use of some of that violent and misogynistic language. I don't understand at all why it wasn't acknowledged that on a number of occasions, I'm sure, that Downing Street and the Cabinet Office sometimes didn't follow the regulations. You will see throughout any number of emails between us all, this endless conversation about is it OK that so many people are in the office? What are we doing to try to limit the number of people in a meeting room? Being honest about the fact that actually... I would find it hard to pick a one day when the regulations were followed properly inside that building. And then finally, probably the biggest takeaway of this week was learning about the chaotic indecisiveness of Boris Johnson and the alleged comments he made about what should happen to the older members of society. Could we have 146636, please? This is your diary, your, your notebook, page 92. Halfway down the page, we can see CX bilat. Is that a reference to a bilateral meeting between the Prime Minister and the Chancellor Exchequer? It is, yes. In quotes, we're killing the patient to tackle the tumour. Large PPL, numbers of people, yep. who will die. Why are we destroying everything for people who will die anyway soon? I think that, I think that says economy. Sorry, it's mine. Sorry. Handle. Destroy the economy for people who will die anyway soon. Mr Shafi, who said those words? I can't say for sure. Um, I think it was the former Prime Minister. And people in hospital, the elderly or the infirm or the ill, were described as bed blockers. Um, he says, I must say I've been slightly rocked by some of the data on COVID fatalities. The median age is 82 to 81 for men, 85 for women. That's above life expectancy, uh, so get COVID and live longer. Hardly anyone under 60 goes into hospital. I no longer buy all this NHS overwhelmed stuff. Folks, I think we may need to recalibrate. So this was a little bit earlier in August, where Patrick Balance has recorded that the PM WhatsApp group kicks off. And it says this, he's obsessed with older people accepting their fate and letting the young get on with life and the economy going. PM says... His party thinks the whole thing is pathetic and COVID is just nature's way of dealing with old people. And I'm not entirely sure I disagree with them. A lot of moderate people think it's a bit too much. And lastly, please, page 312. The chief whip says, I think we should let the old people get it and protect others. PM says, a lot of my backbenchers think that. And I must say, I agree with them. It's not saying that the economy is the main argument. It's related, but it's different. It's saying, look, it's only old people um, who get this disease. Why don't we just let them get it so the young people can live their lives? So on that rather bleak note, that is all we've got for this week. The witnesses next week include Pretty Patel. Don't know if you remember her, but that is sure to be an interesting watch. And also a representative from the Treasury Department. So we'll get to hear, hopefully, a little bit about how our current Prime Minister was acting during the pandemic. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you'd like to support us and you're able to do so, then please head over to opendemocracy.net and there you'll be able to make a donation so that we can continue to produce these COVID inquiry update videos. Either way, stay safe and have a great day.